Okay, everyone, let's continue on to section six, high availability firewall clustering and virtual systems. Introduction to HA and firewall clustering. Okay, everyone, in this video, we're gonna take a look at high availability and uh, firewall clustering in the Palo Alto platform. And this is something that is a must. If you're running any critical environment, you should definitely have high availability. You need to have an M plus one environment, meaning one active instant and at least another one in standby in case that primary goes down or fails for whatever reason. The Palo Alto is very intuitive when it comes to deploying high availability setups. And this particular slide, we can see that I have two operation modes. I have an active standby mode, which in this case, I have Palo Alto 01, PA01 in active and PA02 in standby. And this is Palo Alto 5260 which will include predefined HA interfaces. So on the Palo Alto, certain models will have the dedicated management interface as well as the HA interface or the high availability interface. And this is where you're gonna cross connect both units. They're both on the same data center. So if you have both units sitting on the same data center, most simple and effective approach will be to cross connect them. So you're gonna have a peering between HA uh, port 1A to HA port 1A on the second unit. So we're cross connecting port to port as well as the high speed chassis interconnect. So this particular interface in a Palo Alto HA pair will send the data plane traffic and we'll discuss that information or what this port is gonna do. So it basically syncs the sessions between the two firewalls. So in order for this environment to work properly and fail over quick, it needs to share session information between the two units meaning the active unit, the one that is currently forwarding traffic, either inbound to the internet or inbound to the inside zone, uh, it needs to tell the standby unit, hey, I got this many sessions and this is what I'm currently processing. In case I go down, you have already a copy of that and you can continue my duty. And this is what will allow you to have this seamless, you know, one ping, two ping, drop type of impact so you're basically not going to notice that you lost a whole firewall because you have that session synced between the two units the ha interfaces the actual dedicated ha interfaces will transmit the heartbeat information so i am going to keep saying a hello to my both units so i'm going to be sharing hellos and making sure that we're both alive hey i'm here and we'll continue to have this ha the status of active standby. So in this case, we're gonna have a standby unit. This standby unit and active standby will remain as far as management. You can still get to the dedicated management interface. However, it's not gonna forward any traffic. I'm just gonna be standing by as the word it's saying, it's a standby unit. I am going to be standing by in case the active primary goes down for whatever reason and I'm gonna take over ownership of the traffic forwarding. So in the Palo Alto, I can configure a link and path monitoring. So when you configure active standby or active active pairs or clusters, you're gonna have some parameters that you gotta configure and tell the Palo Alto, hey, if this happens, I want you to fail over. Meaning that, for example, if you want to configure a monitor policy, you can say, well, I'm going to constantly ping to the outside and you can ping to Google's popular DNS 4.2.2.2 or you can ping 8.8.8.8. If for some reason I stop pinging, I want you to go ahead and fail over to the standby. So treat myself as failed and I'm going to go ahead and fail over to the standby and the standby will become online. And you set up thresholds. So if I lose more than five pings, consider myself down and fail over to standby. And we're going to configure that on our next video. In the case of Active Active, and this is why I love a lot of Palo Alto's way of doing Active Active. In Active Active, you can actually have both units forwarding traffic at the same time versus in Active Standby, the only one will be forwarding traffic. What's the benefit of it? Well, you can have load balancing, some sort of load balancing, because then you'll have both units forwarding traffic at the same time. In order for us to accomplish a load balancing scenario here, we got to configure a virtual IP and set up that ARP load sharing. In this case, both firewalls will be able to route traffic outside. So they're basically working as a cluster of resources and both units are going to send and receive traffic inbound and outbound. So you take full use of your cluster. 
So this particular setup is a little bit more complex, obviously, than the active standby, but it's not too complicated to the point that, you know, we got to go to school all over again to, to understand how it's, it's done. So as long as you have, you know, correctly configured and good to go and make sure that everything has been tested and, uh, and you confirm that communication is, is happening you know, as the way it should be and you perform this failover. So, and I've seen this many, many times in environments that I work with where they set up an HA cluster, they don't do a failover test to make sure that the cluster is actually working. They just set it up and, oh yeah, it's set up, it's so good to go. But you don't unplug uh, cords to see if, uh, yeah, it's actually working. I was able to fail over and traffic is still flowing or, you know, make sure that the policies that they put in place, like to ping to the outside, they're actually working by just triggering force failover, meaning I'm going to unplug my outside interface and see if the standby will take over and make sure that my traffic is actually working. That's something that's mandatory. So so if you build the, the, the HA cluster, you gotta make sure that you do a failover test so you make sure that everything is working as expected. And an active active standpoint, well, they're actually active active, so meaning that they're actually forwarding traffic. If there's an issue, you're gonna notice that right away because one of the units might start dropping traffic and you know, well, even though that is active active, this unit is not able to forward traffic. So let's take a look at the network side, switches, cabling, etc. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at um, what's the benefit of going one way versus the other. And I think I explained this on this video, so active standby is just basically one unit active, the other one just waiting. If something happens, we'll take over. Versus active active, then you have load balancing between the two units. You can send traffic and receive traffic across the two units. Both unit interfaces are gonna be active. They're gonna be able to forward traffic. Whereas the active standby, only one will, is going to be able to move traffic. The other one is just going to see the interfaces as down. So in active active, also the benefit of going active active has also some constraints. Not necessarily constraints, involves configurations. Certain parameters that you're going to be configuring manually. For example, the NAT rules, they have to be, in some cases, assigned to each individual firewall. So you might need to configure two NAT rules for the same purpose, but one pointing to PA01 and then the other one pointing to PA02 and I'll show you this on our video regarding active active and finally if you do patching you can actually patch both units at the same time by going this setup so active standby mode I patch the active and actually I am invoking the same commands to the standby the reason why is everything is sync so if I make a change here so if I add a policy I add this object I add a NAT I anything or I change anything except certain areas that we're going to be looking at as well on the video. So there's certain areas that you make changes they are not going to be replicated. And the high availability section, of course, is one of them because they're going to be unique. Uh, but everything else, most config stuff, most policies, most NAT rules, everything else will be synced. So if you configure something here, it's going to auto be synced to this standby unit using the uh, HA interfaces. Okay, so let's and uh, let's go from there.